Welcome to the Draw Shops Get Genius Podcast, where we talk to today's business influencers to pick their brain and pull out their genius. It's time to get genius. Hello, listeners, and welcome to another Get Genius episode. Today, we are speaking with Jimmy Harding. Jimmy is a best selling author, an advisor, a speaker, a consultant, and of course, an entrepreneur. Today, we're talking about his consulting and marketing agency, which helps business owners develop, plan, and execute growth strategies to not only completely dominate their marketplace within 12 months, but also to position themselves for long-term sustainable growth and market share. Jimmy has made it his personal mission to share his knowledge and expertise with smart entrepreneurs and successful business owners striving for exponential growth in the millennium's marketplace. And he readily admits that he could not have accomplished his own achievements without the mentoring and guidance of brilliant men and women invested in his continued advancement and success. Jimmy's narrative of growth and transformation have led industry leaders such as Tony Robbins, Mike Koenigs, Neil Strauss, and Joel Polish to ask him to share his story with their audiences. And today he's going to share that story with you. He has really inspirational stories, really strong takeaways for you to implement today, regardless of the business that you are in. He does primarily work with consultants, uh, coaches, business advisors, but everything that you're hearing in terms of marketing, in terms of simplifying your business and really raising up that revenue, you can apply to any model that you have. And Jimmy's just a warm, awesome dude. And it was really a pleasure to do this interview with him. And I know you're going to enjoy it. Hello, Jimmy, and welcome to the show. Hi, Summer. Thanks for having me. It's a real pleasure to be here. I'm really excited for our listeners to hear about what you do. We have uh, a big following of entrepreneurs so, um, and I know that, I know that you can be quite helpful. Um, I'm wondering first if you can tell us a little bit of your background and how you got started in doing what you're doing today. Absolutely. So I'll give you like a 30 year, um, background in about a couple of minutes, if that's okay. Perfect. So, <laughs> I've uh, been a lifelong entrepreneur. I mean, even you know, even when I was a kid, 10 years old, I kind of realized that I could create my own economy. And if I needed 10 bucks, I needed to go cut two lawns, right? So that's kind of how I've grown up, have basically never had a job uh, that I didn't create for myself. And so long story short, when uh, I, I had a pretty big and successful uh construction business and we ended up getting uh wiped out in hurricane katrina in 2005 and um went through a lot of uh a lot of struggles with that we were initially super uh super busy helping 80 families get back in their homes and then after that it just shut down boom and so that was at the point when I really uh, needed to start learning marketing. So, I, I mean, I went from, you know, having, thir you know, 13 properties under construction, all having uh, anywhere from four to 13 feet of water in them oh. to, uh, you know, to finally being out of money and out of options. And I had to get real resourceful. And, you know, the funny thing is, is I was laughing to myself as other people would come in and they were doing all of this marketing and advertising. And I just, uh, you know, thought that was foolish because I had always built my business on reputation and delivering a good product. And, you know, that worked until the time that it didn't work anymore. Right. And that's really when I had a, a dig into marketing. And I remember having like my last hundred thousand dollars in the bank and I bought 
this big package at the Superdome. So I'm going to have these commercials and everything playing during the Saints games. And that's how I'm going to get customers because, you know, surely anyone who goes to a Saints game would have, uh, you know, th- those are pretty expensive tickets. They'd have money and they probably need some construction done. And the only phone call that I got was from another advertiser trying to sell me more advertising. Oh, wow. And, uh, you know, it, it was really, uh, it was really crazy. And then, um, you know, I just, I ended up running out of options. I had to close that business. And then I opened another business, which was kind of an environmental cleanup type of thing in the, in the uh, mold remediation area. And right when we were getting that thing off of the ground, it, uh, another thing happened to me, right? So I show up to a, a Fortune 100 oil company, and I'm going to sign a big contract for cleaning like 87 of the offshore drilling platforms. And the morning I show up to sign that contract, the BP oil spill happened in the middle of the night before oh, that. So wow. in the boardroom, I think I'm coming to sign a seven figure contract and I get there and I see this thing and I don't even know what it is, but I know something's wrong because all non-essential services have been canceled, you know? And the thing that came from that, the thing that was really a distinction that I know now when I look back is like, instead of, instead of being in that position where I said, you know, how could this happen again to me? I just, when I got in the elevator, I remember saying, how can I use this? How can I use this situation, this experience, you know? And uh, what I realized is like, you know, I just dug into marketing after closing the construction company, figured out how to get myself an unknown brand new company and entity into the boardroom of a fortune 100 company. I said, now that is a pretty valuable skill. (laughs) Yeah. And that's when I had that, uh, that's when I had that distinction. And, um, that's when I went back and I started building my, uh, remediation business out of that and just really fell in love with, uh, with marketing and was really good at it. And about that time, my, uh, my son was born and I was at a point where I was having to go on the road. We had more work than we could handle. And I was like, I just have to figure out a way to do this because it's not acceptable for my son to grow up and me to be on the road all the time. And then that's how I started using my skills, uh, that I developed to help other entrepreneurs, um, get clients. And so the, uh, you know, the whole thing came through a long process of, you know, being on top of the world, losing everything, thinking I'm going to be back on top of the world and then losing the again, and then just having a shift in psychology about the event, how I reacted to it, um, has basically changed everything for me and put me into the position what I do now. I think that's the most important um, quality of a consultant is to have gone through that. Because I know there's some, not that they're not good consultants, but I know there's some consultants out there, but they haven't gone through. It's kind of just been, you know, out of college, learn business consulting and haven't really gone through that what a lot of entrepreneurs go through, building something and sometimes losing it all and having to start from the beginning again. I tell you, Summer, and it's like, I mean, I, I, feel, I feel the pain. Like having that, having that experience of buying marketing, the, I mean, buying advertising that doesn't work. Oh, like yeah. in, in the Superdome, I mean, my friends were like, wow, look at that. That is amazing. Look at all of this stuff. But it didn't produce results, you know, and, and I know I know that feeling. So, I mean, I really empathize with, uh, you know, with everyone. When I mean, the hardest thing to do is to advertise and spend money on paid advertising and like, you know, you're not getting any results from it. And you see, you see, 
you know, like Facebook debiting your uh, your card every day, yeah. hitting it, ding, 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 and you're like, man, what is going on here? You know. So, what advice and, uh, do you do you have for entrepreneurs who are, you know, trying getting into marketing, or even if they are, you know, marketing and spending a lot of advertising dollars right now, but they're not seeing the results? What's the advice that you would give them? This would be, you know, this would be the main thing that I would tell anyone to look at. And so I'm going to tell a little story uh, to best illustrate this. I love so, stories. <laughs> okay, great. So when you, uh, when you look at an iceberg, you see about 10 to 20% of it is above the water, what you see, and the rest is below the water. So what I say is when people say that maybe their Facebook ads don't work, I always want to take a look deeper than that because I don't believe that it's all that it's the ad because the ad is pretty easy to set up. You check these boxes and you figure out who you want to target and all of this type of stuff. And it's usually something that goes deeper to that into one of your processes and usually your messaging. Mm -hmm. And so they, uh, you know, I can, I can target the same market with a different message and get two different responses. And my little story is going to be a fishing story, right? So when, when I grew up in New Orleans, like we love to go catch speckled trout, right? Yeah. And so catching speckled trout, you basically need live shrimp. Live shrimp is the bait, right? And when you use a different kind of bait, say you want to catch a redfish, for instance, you would use a cracked crab. If you want to catch catfish, you use dead shrimp, right? Like frozen shrimp. So there is a different bait for each type of of fish that you want to catch. So I'm going to shift that over. And what happens is people tend to say, I'm not attracting quality clients. I'm not getting the type of clients that I want to get. And I usually always relate that back to the bait that they're using and the bait being the messaging, right? Exactly. And so one of the things that is a, you know, a big thing um, in marketing and copywriting is starting with a question, right? So what one of the mistakes several people make in their messaging is they'll say, you know, are you struggling to get clients? Right. Well, you know what that means? You're going to, you're going to attract someone who's struggling where if you would shift that message a little bit and, you know, talk about, are you already attracting clients, but would like to 10 X that you see how that subtle shift in messaging Well, that that's going to make the difference in what type of client you attract. So like if, if you work with someone, um, if you want to work with someone that like is already doing okay, but you really want to help them get to the next level, then the messaging is what is going to attract those type of people. If you're, if you want to work with people that are brand new, then it's a separate message for attracting those people that, that are brand new. And generally I find when it's, it's rarely the targeting as much as it is the messaging. So we have to put our, yeah, we have to put ourselves and and really become client centric. I was and just put our, say, yeah, and really yeah. know who your client is and put yourself mm -hmm. in their spot. Yeah. And so you know, I tell, I say all the time, like there's there's so much. Uh, even if you've noticed, um, if you follow any type of online launches lately yeah in especially in the past year what you see happening a lot is like when someone goes to opt in then there will be a question that's asked to segment you right so it's like are you brand new are you already doing this and they'll have three or four questions and depending on the box that you tick 
the very next the very next video or webinar or whatever it is is customized to that question so like in order in other words like rather than trying to customize a whole thing the important thing to do would be to customize that launch like on the thank you page and acknowledge that problem right and then also to do that in the testimonials for that specific type of person so in other words if you have a product or a training that would help someone who is brand new but it would also hate, help someone that may say they're doing 250,000 a year and they can get to a million then your testimonials should be that type of person rather than for a brand new person like you know that we help you know this person went from 0 to 100,000 a year you know well that's not going to resonate with the person who's at 250 or 500 trying to get to seven figures so when you can use basically all of the same material but have a minute or two minutes on each piece of content that specifically speaks to the box that they checked exactly and it's just you know it i i just really believe that the messaging changes everything once you can figure out the messaging the marketing becomes so much easier but it has to be, it's like, it's basically not a one size message fits everyone. Right. And it's individual, you know, relationships really that you're making with these clients. And that's essentially marketing is, you know, connecting and, and building that, that reputation with, with the client. And so the more specific you can be and tailor to their individual needs, the more that they're going to feel connected and comfortable with you. Yes. And, you know, it's so easy today to, um, you know, to create a dynamic experience, in other words. So when uh, with Facebook advertising, it makes it so easy because you can give a specific ad or message to someone who visited a specific page. Right. So if if someone has gone partially through your funnel then you can re-engage them from the place where they were instead of trying to send them all the way back to the beginning again. And so that kind of comes back, you know, to my bait thing where, where if, you know, if the bait, if the message is the bait to catch a fish, what type of bait are you using? Because that's going to depend on the type of fish that you catch. Exactly. I love that analogy. It's so great and so true. So what are some of the key things that have allowed you to grow your business successfully? Actually using the telephone, right? Really? So yeah. like <laughs> <laughs> very, you know, when uh when I was first when I was first starting, like I tried to do everything online right like just work be completely virtual and um it's really really hard uh to convert sales online right but when we can when we can use our online process basically just to schedule a call and then integrating a phone call for that like we watched our conversion rates just skyrocket. So what we've essentially done over, you know, over a period of time is like, that is really my zone of genius, right? Trying to uh, figure out different situations for different companies to get people on to a breakthrough call or a powwow session, as you call it. Yeah. And, you know, so, so that, you know, in my business and the people that I've helped when they do integrated marketing and sales, like when they take online to offline and, and get that phone call, that is like the biggest booster ever. Because if you, if you can use a great sales process, even, even just mediocre and, and really understanding sales a little bit more, like 
without doing anything else, if you can increase your sales conversion, you could literally double your business, right? You don't need any more leads. You don't, uh, you don't have to have a funnel. You don't have to have any of that type of stuff to get started if you can improve your sales process. And what I, you know, what I really like to look at in a sales process is that I come from the point of view where I'm not selling anyone my product. What I'm really selling is enrolling them into their bigger future. Mm. And so changing my psychology on what I'm actually doing when I get on the phone, um, it, it allows me, you know, to be very frank, have some frank discussions and really help people because when I'm on the phone, I'm not necessarily trying to close a sale. I'm just literally trying to deliver as much value and tell someone, you know, give them a path to get where they want to go. I'm trying to enroll them into their bigger future, not into my program. Right, and exactly. by taking that, by taking that perspective, like rather than getting on a call to sell, it's all about getting on a call to serve. And then, you know, it, it, it just so happens that, you know, if three out of 10 calls are a good fit, we may end up working together. If five or out of 10 are a good fit, we may end up working together, but it's, you know, whether we're going to work together or not, I'm going to get on that call and I'm going to serve someone. And my whole thing is whether they work with me or not, that is a totally separate thing, but it's to enroll them and show them the path forward to their bigger future. And that's such a great message too, for, for any kind of communication, whether it's an email, a sales letter, any of your marketing, marketing material is, you know, you, is that you're sharing value with them rather than trying to get the sale. Yes. Yes, definitely. And, you know, I mean, the, well, if we take that adding massive value, right? So, so I always say, I want to do, uh, I want to do a couple of things, right? And just like, just like you're doing with your podcast. So I want to, you know, I want to serve my clients and I want to add more value to the marketplace than anyone else is even willing to do. Right now, that doesn't mean that doesn't mean that um, I'm going to charge uh, and, and just take anyone on as a client. But my philosophy is that I want to work with a few right fit clients and then everything else, you know, I'm just going to share. I'm still going to add massive value to the marketplace and just give it away, whether it's on a podcast or an email that I write or a video that I create. So like I'm constantly adding value to the marketplace. Exactly. And the one thing that I find, so, you know, this may sound like a real subtle thing. The, the biggest problem I see with a lot of the people that we help is they've been creating value for years, right? And it's like, they're almost, a lot of people are creating content when they're just getting started. Like I got to put this content out. I got to do this. I got to do that. And they start doing that and they're blogging and making videos and doing live casts and all of that stuff. Now, if you could continue to do that and be of service, giving first, and sprinkle in making offers, right? Like I tell people all the time, are you struggling in your business? Are your sales down today? And I say, well, let me ask you this one question. How many people have you offered to help today so they could actually give you some money for helping them, right? It can't be all content creating. So when you combine those two things, things really change. And if you do it in the right way, where you're always adding value and you're offering people an opportunity to go deeper, then it's not like a big uh, buy my stuff, buy my stuff type of thing, right? Right, exactly. And so, I mean, I've literally seen people double their businesses that were just like pure content creators when we started mixing it in. 
and doing like a four to one ratio. Okay, keep doing all of your things, but every fifth time, you're going to offer people an opportunity for a powwow session. Right. You so know? would you say that missing missing that mark and, and, and not not coming from a place of service is one of the biggest reasons that holds entrepreneurs back from success? Yes, definitely. Okay. Definitely. Because, you know, I, I see uh, when I watch, um, I look at all of our stats and, and I look at um, responses to our emails and, and Facebook posts and different things. And then I look at the news feed, just doing, uh, just doing the, um, you know, research and seeing what's going on. I see three kind of people. And so the first person that I see is always buy my stuff, buy my stuff, buy my stuff. And I want, I want to unfollow them. Right. Right. And then the second type of person is a person that is just constantly adding massive value, just value, 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 value. Yet they struggle to get their business to the next level or even where they want it to be. And then the third type of person that I see is the person that is constantly adding value, massive value to the marketplace, but they've combined making offers to people. And when you get those two things right, when you add massive value and you sprinkle in giving, you know, in a very cool way about, you know, hey, let me help you. Let's hop on a call, see what we can do. And, you know, if at the end of it, it's a good fit, then we can talk about that. So one of the things I do on my breakthrough sessions is, you know, I know people are skeptics and, and I will, uh, I will even say if it's cold traffic or anything, I say, you know, I, I'm sure that you think this is, you know, a sales call in disguise and blah, blah, blah. But, you know, I promise you, if you want to work with me, you're going to have to ask me about it because I'm not even going to bring it up. Right. right? So, and, and when you mix that in, you know, so like if you, if you have a little funnel and you give away a checklist or a lead magnet, and then you have a thank you page where you thank them for downloading the checklist and then you offer them an opportunity, uh, to get on a breakthrough session with you. And, you know, the first thing people think in their mind, is just human behavior that, oh, this is going to be a sales call. So the best way to address that is by addressing it right there in that video and saying, now you may think this is a uh, sales call in disguise, but it's actually a breakthrough session. We're going to look at three things. You know, we're going to look at where you are, where you want to be, and how do we bridge that gap? And then at the end of that, if you'd like some help implementing that plan, then we can talk about how, uh, you know, how we can move forward to help you implement the plan that we come up with. And the people who mix that ingredient in to the always adding massive value are the people that I see growing their business to the multi-seven and even eight-figure uh, mark. And the people that always struggle tend to get stuck in content creation mode and they just haven't made the subtle shifts yet to start making offers. Because if you don't make an offer for someone to help someone so they can give you money, they're not just going to automatically give you money, right? Right. There are, it, and, you know, it's not – so many, so many people have, uh, that I, you know, that I find like they don't like asking for money. Right. And, and it's a big thing with, with entrepreneurs, especially in the expert space that, um, you know, they think of sales in that one way. But I tell you, if you can, if anyone can reframe the way they think about sales and think of it as actually serving, right. And, actually start working with people on the phone, like 
originally connecting with someone, maybe from an ad with a lead magnet or anything like that, and then offering them a process where they can either get on a webinar or get on a phone call or something like that, you know, and you sprinkle in those offers, those are the businesses that really uh, go. Because, I mean, it's not, it's not unusual that I'm, I'm kind of in this space where people are stuck at like between ten to $25,000 a month and right. they come to me stuck and what they want to do is get to 100000 a month, right? And mm-hmm. these few simple tweaks about putting a process in place to do that, it's not unusual for that to happen in a relatively short period of time. Yeah, and that makes so much sense. Speaking of, um, you know, making increasing revenue, uh, a lot of entrepreneurs get get stuck wearing all different hats because they think they have to in, in all aspects of their business. And, and things start to feel complicated and it, it turns out that they're spending less time doing what they love and why they got into the business in the first time and, and working, you know, what you would call their, their magic. Mm -hmm. What, what are some suggestions? And I know that when you work with your clients, you help them to, to simplify their business so that they can do the things that they love and what they're really good at. What are, what are like three tips that you could give entrepreneurs now to simplify their business so that they are getting out of the things they don't need to be doing and focusing on what they are really good at and, and what, what they're passionate about? That is a great question, right? And the very, the very first thing uh, that I tell everyone is like, from now on, from this moment on, even if you do it just one time, every single, every single thing that you do, document. So like, if you're, if you are setting up if you know, like if you're in the advertising business, if you're setting up a Facebook ad, go ahead and document your process. Screen, you know, screen capture it, write out a little thing about what your process is, how to do it. And then the next thing is you if you're, you know, in that business creating a landing page, okay, screen capture a video from that and then write down the formula you use and create a tool or a template for everything in your business. And then you can turn that stuff over to someone else, but you have to do it your, yourself first. And I believe the reason that that's so important, a lot of people, you know, hiring is a difficult thing. Turning things over, it's a difficult thing because no one's going to do it exactly right. how we were doing it. Right. And what I've really found is the people, you know, when we have trouble, when we hire people, um, it becomes more hectic for us. So it's like, you know, I don't even want to go through the headaches of hiring someone because I know how miserable my life's going to be, you know, with them asking me a hundred questions a day and all of this stuff. Right. But the fact of the matter, like when I first went through that and I struggled, the reason it's, I struggled is because it was my fault. I didn't have the proper training in place. So like once I documented all of my processes and what I do, so like now I have a whole training portal for my business of every single thing that we do. So anytime we have to bring someone on or anytime someone is unsure of something, they just go into the training portal and look, right? I've created, and it should be the same way. So I say to do that so you can get team members to help you. And then I also say to document, make tools and templates from your delivery process. Yes. Right. right. That is so, so helpful. I, I've done that myself. It, it's funny how people think that nobody else can take over, but once you outline step by step what it is that you do, you can actually hand it off to someone to do for you. I know it's so great, right? So that would be, you know, that would be those are kind of the same thing, but that's two things. I would say document your internal processes of how you set it up 
and then make tools and templates for what you deliver so you could start to get leverage in your business, right? And then the third thing is I think the biggest, fastest breakthrough with anyone is working on their sales psychology and starting to implement uh, phones. Now, I've literally had people tell me that in the past, you know, 90 days of working with you, I had more sales conversations than I've had in the past 10 years, right? Yeah. And the reason that that, the reason that that, that, that is important, like I, I never, I never suggest that anyone completely hand off their sales process. I think that if you would, if, if whoever the business owner is, if they would initially do the phone calls, really learn what the objections of the marketplace are, then you understand. So if you do that for the first 30, 60, 90 days, you're going to get research that is so valuable. You can't even buy that data, right? right. Because you're yeah. going to know, you're going to know everything. You're going to know how to fix it. You're going to know how to address it. Once you have that initial stuff going on, then it's time to bring in a salesperson, right? Because the last thing, the last thing I want to see an entrepreneur doing is just like being on the phone doing breakthrough sessions all the time. But initially, that is really important. And then that gives you the opportunity to be able to train someone by you knowing your own marketplace. Yeah. To be able to be really, really good on the phone. And I think if someone does those three things, business gets a lot simpler. Yes. Oh, those are great, great tips. So let's talk about what happens on your 30 minute profit activator calls that you offer to um, coaches, consultants, and, and business advisors. So what those, uh, you know, what those profit activator calls are is we're looking, you know, we're looking for a couple of things when they get, uh, when they get on the call. And the main thing is we want to see where they are, where they want to go in the path to get there. Right. And so some of the key things that I look at is generally it has to do with a price increase where we can repackage and reposition something and have a price increase on it. Right. The mm -hmm. second thing, uh, the second thing is looking to see if they have an automated system in place that's going to generate phone calls. And then the third thing is how they can actually close those, uh, close those phone calls into enrollment calls and actually enroll people into their program. So those are the, uh, those are the three places that I originally want to look at to make sure that we can help people uh, do that. Like there was, there was a lady I worked with from a nonprofit and she had this program and book that she was selling, you know, for 97 dollars to a um to the nonprofit she worked with and we've literally repackaged that into a nine thousand dollar program right? right so you can take your intellectual intellectual property that you have that um that so many people uh are just not getting the true value of what they're delivering to the marketplace so a lot of times Anyone can take what they have, repackage it, and reposition it. You know, sometimes you could take something that you may sell as a three hundred ninety nine dollar course and add a human component to it. Right? Everyone wants that. People are starving for a human to human experience. Right? right. So if, if I can take if I could take a training product that I have and add a group call to it once a week, I can usually 10 X the value of that because they're getting a human element and they're getting guidance. 
house, right? And so those are a lot of the things that we look at to to pre uh, you know to prepackage and preposition, and then we want to make sure that there's a machine running 24 hours a day, like our friend Joe Paula says, robotic marketing, right? Exactly. So so we want to have a funnel and make sure that we're pushing new leads to that funnel, and then we want to make sure that we reframe what they're doing in their sales process, right? To get people to a phone call and use what I call is like the 12 steps system for heart centered entrepreneurs to make more sales. Right. And so, you know, there are just, there are key, a few key things that, uh, that you have to do on, uh, on the phone to kind of keep your thing going. And, what I can do, if you'd like, is I can uh, I can email you a copy of my twelve bullet points. If you want to put that in your show notes or something for your people, that would be fabulous. Then, yes, we'll put that in our blog in our show notes. Thank great. you. Great. Yeah, I've literally taken that uh, that sales process and um, where it's not, you know, I've found so many people have. Um, trouble trying to follow a script or something and what i what i did is i made a checklist which is basically just 12 bullet points and it allows you to stay easy natural and comfortable in your own voice without trying to follow a script but just make sure that you know you do this element first right right and boom 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 and it's just you know keeping setting the agenda of the call and the whole thing. So it's, it really, uh, it's really easy. And I think if, uh, anyone, any one of your listeners, if they just took those bullet points and incorporated them into what they do, I believe that they could really, you know, unless they're seasoned already, it, you know, they'll, it'll still help. But if you're not really seasoned at sales and you have trouble asking for money, if you incorporate these, uh, these bullet points into your sales process, I think it would skyrocket anyone's conversion rate. Oh, definitely. I, and, and do you, do you work with people that are just getting into the consulting business? Because I, I find that just, just similar to your story, people that have gone through, you know, maybe a couple of different businesses or one business, but they've learned so much and they've been able to build other businesses outside of that, that they suddenly just naturally have this passion because people are always asking, how did you get from here to there? How'd you do it? How'd you do it? And they start to realize that they have this love for coaching and, and consulting and helping other people build their businesses. Do you work with those type people as well that are just starting their whole program of consulting? Yes, I do. Actually, that's like, you know, I was, I was telling someone uh, yesterday, one of my, one of my private clients, because he was just, he was amazed at some of the, uh, the depths of my knowledge and stuff. And, and just knowing specific industries. And I said, the reason I do that is because like I, my half of my business is working with guys like you one on one right mm -hmm. and where where we're doing all of your stuff for you then another part of my business is where we're helping other people who want to be coaches or consultants set up their program and and set it up with a great foundation from the beginning and so the reason that I'm so uh, passionate about this is because I've what I've gone through but what what really makes a difference for anybody is that the majority of our revenue is from actually working with businesses not necessarily teaching businesses how to do it so we have a great mixture that we do both and each one enhances the other that's great. That's really, really great. So now if somebody wants to find out more information about you and what you do, perhaps book their call with you, how, what's the best way for them to get in touch with you and find out more information about you? 
couple of ways. I mean, I'm uh, they can look me up on Facebook, Jimmy Harding, or they can go to my website, jimmyharding.com. And if anyone uh, wanted to book a call, they could just go to jimmyharding.com forward slash schedule. And they could schedule a 30 minute profit activator call. Fantastic. And we'll make, we'll put that in the show notes as well. Well, this is so fantastic. Know, yeah. We've covered, you know, we've covered a lot of things and not necessarily um, in depth, but I think, you know, I've, I think we've purposely gone throughout a bunch of different topics and, and, you know, given some good writer downers and, and breakthroughs across, you know, a couple of various things specifically like, you know, with integrating phone sales, how to close uh, conversations and then using the different bait for marketing messages, right? You're going to attract the type of client um, by your messaging much more than your targeting. Yes, really, really fantastic takeaways and uh, as, as well as those in how to simplify your business. So these, this was really, really, really awesome. Thank you so much, Jimmy. I think it applies to those, even if they are not a coach or consultant, it's just there, it works for any kind of business that you're in. But if you are specifically in that line of business and you're looking for that help and really attracting those, those premium clients, simplifying your business and, and rapidly, you know, increasing your sales like like jimmy says 10x i mean it's it will amaze you the simple things that jimmy's going to offer you and get and share with you that can do that jimmy thank you so much for all all the knowledge and experience that you've shared with us today thank you i really appreciate it thank you for listening to today's get genius you can learn more about the draw shop at www.thedrawshop.com on facebook linkedin and twitter your home for kick butt custom whiteboard marketing videos. Your ideas come to life. Thanks for listening. Please share, comment, and make any suggestions for future genius guests.